Well, hello there, friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. I am Bishop A. Reginald Littman, your host and senior pastor of the New Mountaintop Church. We're excited to share this teaching along with all of these teachings with you. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and help us reach our goal of 1,000 subscribers. Also, in the description box below, you can find a free PDF handout that is full of the teaching that I'm sharing with you today, along with some personal discovery questions that will help you take a deeper dive into the lesson content and the scriptures that we're going to share with you tonight. So sometimes it's not always easy to take notes and follow along that way by jotting things down as we go along. This way you can have it all in front of you. You can share it with your friends, your coworkers, your neighbors, or whomever, and get together and have your own little discussion group. And I think that's an awesome way to apply these teachings. So again, I'm excited that you're here. Tonight's teaching, this week's teaching, we're going to be talking about trusting God with your friendships. Trusting God with your friendships. Now, relationships are an essential aspect of our human experience. Relationships are something that we all want, we all need, and we all look to have. The truth is, God actually created us for community. We were created to be in relationship with other people. But not all friendships are easy or straightforward. There are times that it's easier to connect with people, and then there are times that happen, and we'll talk about this a little bit later on in our discussion, that there are times that relationships falter and may even lose their usability. So it's not always simple, straightforward, and easy bake oven kind of situation when we're talking about relationships and friendships. And it's for that very reason that we have to learn to trust God even with our friendships. You know, trusting God with friendships is probably not something that most of us have ever prayed a prayer about. Most of us have probably not ever prayed, Lord, please help me to find the right people to be friends with. But trusting God with your friendships is so powerful and so important in order to develop healthy relationships and to maintain healthy communication. But what does it really mean to actually trust God with your friendships? Well, simply, simply put, Trusting God with your friendships means seeking his wisdom in how you cultivate, navigate, and cherish these relationships, how you develop them, how you work through them, how you navigate the challenging moments of that friendship, and how you cherish those individuals with whom you begin to develop relationships. That's what it means to trust God. It's seeking God's wisdom as to how to properly navigate and even begin to establish relationships with people. Do you think that's important? I do. I really do. So I want to share this with you to help you to be able to learn how to really trust God concerning your friendships. Now, for many of us, we struggle with making friends, even in our adult years. You know, things don't necessarily get better as you get older. They just get a little bit more obvious, right? So in this study, we're going to take a deep dive into scripture to understand how we can actually trust God with our friendships. All right, are you ready for the first principle? All right, here we go. Let's do it. So number one, we have to seek God's wisdom in choosing friends. Seek God's wisdom. Seek God's wisdom in choosing friends. Again, a lot of us, we choose friends based on who chooses us or who warms up, who becomes Mr. or Miss Nicey. But you really want to involve God 
in every aspect of your life. Remember this series that we've been on. I'm, I don't even know how long it is now, but this series, the overall uh, topic of this series is trusting God in every area of your life. So you want to also seek God's wisdom in choosing friends. Now, I want to take a look at our first passage for this week. And if you don't have your Bible, go ahead and grab it, grab your notepad, grab your device or whatever you like to use. And we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 13 and verse number 20. Proverbs 13 and 20. So Proverbs 13 and 20 reads like this. It says, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise. But check out the other part of this verse. But the companion of fools will suffer harm. Now, that really speaks to us, doesn't it? Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Do you see why it is important to seek God's wisdom in choosing friends? It's real simple because Proverbs 13 and 20 teaches us that who you walk with determines literally whether you are wise or you are a fool. So let's break down Proverbs 13, 20 just a bit. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise. Now, this part of this particular proverb emphasizes the influence and impact of surrounding oneself with wise individuals. When you spend time with people who are wise, you can learn from their experiences, their values, their insights. Over time, their wisdom might rub off on you helping you to make better decisions and to live a life that's more understanding and more thought provoking. You know, I got to go to the butt, right? But <laughs> the companion of fools or he or she who um, makes the decision to befriend people who are foolish or foolish acting will suffer harm. There's a great contrast here in this verse. If, if one chooses to associate closely with those who make poor decisions or act without thought, well, there's a higher risk that you could, in fact, face negative consequences. And notice this, it's your choice if you do the choosing. So if you choose a person to befriend who is foolish, and you face negative consequences, and you will, it is your choice, your decision, and therefore your results. So those negative consequences that can happen can either be from being influenced by behavior that is foolish or by being in situations with that person that are harmful due to the fact that you are associated with them. So in essence, Proverbs 13 and 20 is really highlighting the importance of choosing one's companions wisely. The people we associate with can have profound impact on our character, our decisions, and overall life trajectory. And this proverb advises seeking out and valuing wisdom in those we spend time with, as that will benefit us in the long run. On the other hand, associating with those who act foolishly also has some results, and that is we will suffer harm. That's why principle number one is so important, seeking God's wisdom in choosing friends, because we want to avoid people who are foolish, right? So it's essential to be open to friendships, but always pray for discernment in choosing friends that will draw you closer to God. You want to be careful who you call a friend and who you choose as a friend. Some people should just be somebody you know, <laughs> or an associate, or somebody I work with, right? But that term friend needs to be reserved for people who truly deserve that role and who truly add to your life. 
wait a minute, let's clarify that, who add value to your life and not add vice to your life. All right. All right. So number one, we need to remember principle number one, seek God's wisdom in choosing friends. Seek God's wisdom in choosing friends. All right. So let's go to principle number two. Principle number two is this. Cultivate friendships with love and patience. Cultivate friendships with love and patience. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to have love and patience when trying to really develop. That's another word for cultivate, trying to develop deep running friendships. So let's look at Paul's words in Colossians chapter three, verse number 12 through 14. And it reads like this. This is Paul talking. And the apostle Paul says, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. I hope you can hear the kindness and the patience in there, the love and the patience. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Now, here Paul is really sharing with us that believers in Christ are reminded of our unique position and our unique identity. We are chosen by God. We are set apart. We are holy. And we are deeply loved by God. We are God's chosen people. And this identity that we have in God forms the foundation for the subsequent instructions that follow in Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 through 14. Because we are his and because we are holy and because we are beloved, we are instructed, clothe yourselves with compassion, with kindness, with humility, with gentleness, and with patience. So just as we put on clothing every single day, Christians, as friends, are called to wear or exhibit certain virtues in our daily lives. And these virtues, such as compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience are reflective of the nature and character of Jesus Christ himself. And so we're encouraged in this passage of scripture to adopt and display these attributes in our own interactions with people in general, but particularly these are attributes that ought to be present in friendships. So he says, bear with each other and forgive another if any of you has a grievance against someone. And the implication here is that living in community will inevitably lead to disagreements or offenses. Wherever there are two or more, there will be disagreements. In fact, for some of us, uh, we live alone and we fall out with ourselves all the time, right? So you know where there's two or more. If you fall out with your own self, there's going to be disagreements. So it's inevitable. However, believers are instructed to endure, that is to bear with one another's imperfections and to forgive any wrongs or grievances. And this, my friends, mirrors the patience and the forgiveness that God shows to us. Which is why Paul says, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Now, please hear this. The standard of forgiveness is not based on human tendencies, but on God's standard. See, just like God through Christ forgave our sins, you and I are required to forgive others' sins. 
It's a call to duplicate and replicate the divine grace that we've received in our own human relationships. And that's why Paul says to us, and over all these virtues, put on love. Love is like the overcoat. At the time uh, that I'm doing this teaching, we're in fall. And so mornings are cold, nights are cold, maybe down in the 40s. But up in the day, the temperature changes. And so we may start out the day with a top coat, with an overcoat, with a jacket. And Paul says that if we are to indeed cultivate friendships with love and patience, our spiritual wardrobe is not complete without the coat of love that goes on top of everything. That's why he says that over all these virtues put on love, why it binds them all together in perfect unity. So love is the overarching virtue that encompasses and perfects all other things. It is the binding agent that creates unity and harmony. And Paul suggests that love is the ultimate expression of the Christian life and the key to unity in the body of Christ. And so in that way, Colossians 3 verse 12 through 14 really provides us with a blueprint for Christian living, particularly in the context of community. It emphasizes the importance of embodying Christ-like virtues, maintaining unity through love. And also, family, this passage reminds believers of their sacred identity and calls them to then reflect God's character in our actions and interactions, because it's all got to be anchored by the central command to love because it's the highest of all virtues. And let me remind you, I know I just said a whole lot, but right down there in the description box is a free PDF that will give you everything I'm giving you right now. I want you to really get this word in you because we have to cultivate friendships with love and patience. And that's what we learn. That's what we learn from Colossians 3 verse 12 through 14. So if you're getting something out of this teaching, I want you to type go in the comments right now. Type go in the comments and I'll know to go ahead to keep going. All right. I want to go back and review really quickly. If you just tuned in, welcome to the midweek refill. We're excited to have you here with us this, this week. We're talking about trusting God with your friendships. Just review just a second. Our first principle for the week is that we have to seek God's wisdom in choosing friends. Seek God's wisdom in choosing friends. Our second principle for this week is that we have to cultivate friendships with love and patience. You know, love and patience is exactly what God uses to reach us and to keep us and to teach us. We have to exhibit and exemplify that same characteristic with those with whom we desire to be friends with. But let's go to the third principle. Here's the third principle for the week. So number three, trust God when friendships change. Trust God when friendships change. Now, friends, one of the things that you and I must remain painfully aware of is that change is something that is inevitable it often cannot be stopped. But the thing you may not be aware of is that change is good for you. It's a part of life. It is something that happens and we have to prepare ourselves for it because even the best of friends change. Even there are times that there are disagreements or just growing apart from individuals. And when changes come in our friendships and our relationships, we can't just throw in the towel and feel like, feel like life is over. We have to have a different perspective. And the word of God gives us a perspective about change that I think is so incredibly powerful. Let me share it with you. In Ecclesiastes chapter number three, verse one, it says this, to everything there is a season and a time 
to every purpose under the heaven, to everything. Let me read it again. There is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. This picture that I have on the screen is is really demonstrative of the season of life that we are approaching right now in the fall of 2023. You may be watching this in 2027 or some other time on the summer of 2024, but it's really demonstrative because all of, you know, this year from spring on, our trees have been filled with green leaves, but we're about to approach the season now where they're going to change colors. They're going to turn beautiful colors, then finally brown, and they're going to fall off the tree and be like the left side of the picture there. Guess what? Sometimes friendships change. Sometimes people drift apart. Instead of you despairing, trust God's purpose in every season and be open to the new relationships that God wants to bring to your life. Because just like on the right side of this picture on the screen, I think it's it's your right, uh, my right right now, the green side. <laughs> you see beautiful greenery, beautiful green leaves. But those leaves have not always been there. No, therefore, this past season. And what happens when they fall off and become mulch or some other uh, usable resource, perhaps. What happens is that in that season where it looks like there is no growth, there's growth you don't even see. It's beneath the surface on each and every branch. And when spring comes back in, the tree fills back up again with leaves. So here's what I'm trying to say. Sometimes in your life, there will be fall seasons where friendships fall, where relationships fall. Even sometimes people fall prey to death. It's a part of the journey. Maybe you've lost a friend or someone you love, and it can feel like that empty side of the tree. Life can feel so empty when people fall off or fall away or even fall asleep, as we like to call it in the Christian world, falling asleep, which is equated with death. But here's what you need to know, is that even when the trees of life, so to speak, the emotional trees of life, appear to be barren and there's nothing there, God has something growing beneath the surface that we often don't even see. Yet sometimes we hold on to people way too long, way past their season. Do you have anybody in your life like that that you're holding on to that you know way down in your soul you really need to let go of? Well, listen, Ecclesiastes says there's a season at a time for every purpose. If you go on and read that entire passage, it talks about a time to be born, a time to die, a time to hold on, a time to let go. So don't hold on to people or things beyond the season. In fact, what you do is you trust God when friendships change. So when people start acting funny on you, it's okay. It just means that maybe they've outgrown their season. I like to say that some people come into our lives for a long-term reason. There's purpose attached to them being in our lives. Others come into our life for a short-term season. Long-term reason or short-term season. And you've got to know the difference. But how will you know the difference? Let's go back to point one. Seek God's wisdom in choosing friends. Number two, cultivate friendships with love and with patience. And number three, even after you have sought God, and even after you have cultivated friendships with love and patience, trust God when friendships change. All right, so... I hope you're getting something out of this teaching tonight. I want to go now to point number four. Number four, be a Christ-like example in all of your friendships. 
Be a Christ-like example. Example. You know, it's not easy being an example. Because when you're an example, it means sometimes you take some stuff off some folks. Sometimes you think you take things that are not fair. But if you indeed want to really learn how to trust God with your friendships, be the Christ-like example in all of your friendships. Now, in the second chapter of the book of Philippians, the Apostle Paul shares with us some powerful tips on how to be a Christ-like example in all of our friendships. He says to us in Philippians chapter 2, verse number 3 through 5, here's how you do it. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. (laughs) Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ. Hmm. What a challenge that is, right? That's a challenging passage of scripture. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or out of vain conceit. And what is Paul saying? Well, let's break it down just a little bit in bite-sized chunks. This is instructing believers not to act based on selfish desires and based on pride. Essentially, he's saying to us, don't do things just to show off or to get ahead for your own benefit. And he continues, rather, in humility, value others above yourself. And this is a call literally to approach life and relationships with humility. It suggests that one should treat others as being more important or more valuable than themselves. It's a challenge to put others' needs and interests ahead of our own to serve rather than insisting upon being served. That, my friends, is a Christ-like example in friendships. He says, not looking to your own interests, but each of you looking to the interest of the others. And this sort of it really expands on the previous statement because it's emphasizing selflessness as opposed to selfishness. Instead of always considering what benefits us, always considering what we want, always considering uh, what we think, we should think about what benefits others and what they might want or what they might need. That is a Christ-like example in your friendships. So in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ. That's how he ends that fifth verse. And this literally is the culmination of the previous instructions. Believers are encouraged to adopt the attitude and the mindset of Jesus Christ in their interactions and in every relationship. So considering Philippians 2, this is sort of an exhortation, if you will, to embrace humility in your friendships, to embrace selflessness in your friendships. Mirroring mirroring the examples that have been set by Jesus, who, though being God, took on human form and he served others and he sacrificed himself. And he was the last one he thought about. So Philippians 2, verse 3 and 3 through 5 is really a call for us to have humility, to be selfless and As that fourth principle for the week says, be a Christ-like example in all of our friendships. Hey, I want you to rate yourself in the comments. How are you doing with number four? Um, If 10 is, man, I'm at the top of the charts. I'm doing all those things that Paul talked about. How would you rate yourself? One, five, seven, six, three? Where do you fall? on the spectrum of following the principles of Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 through 5, and literally being a Christ-like example in all of your friendships. I want to know, so make sure you tell me in the comments, all right? So, I want to encourage you this week 
that as you seek to pursue, develop, and build friendships that reflect Christ, as you trust the Lord with your friendships, strive to reflect Christ's selfless love in all of your friendships so that others may see him through you. After all, that's the ultimate goal for which we are saved. Matthew says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, but glorify the Father, which is in heaven. Hey, I really hope you got something out of these four principles about trusting the Lord with your friendships. If you did, let me know in the comments which one of the four principles are you going to work on and practice. Don't forget, right down there in the description box is a free PDF handout that you can print right now. You can email it to somebody. You can share it. Won't cost you anything. Won't take you but a second to do it. Go get it and take a deeper dive into the scriptures. And you'll be able to see some of the things that I was sharing. I know it's a lot to try to jot down. So I'm giving it to you. It's free. All right. Free 99. Today only. No, I'm playing. It's every day. Hey, I love you so much. This is Bishop Lippman. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and make sure you click the all. That way, every time new content is loaded, you'll be among the first to know. When we go live, you'll be the first to know. Hey, I can't wait to share with you this coming Sunday. May God bless you and keep you. Until next time, you go with God. Thank you.